so tonight I'm going to string a head Black Widow 160 racket ball racket. Uh, this is probably one of the more complex uh, rackets out on the market at the moment for racket ball. Um, it has 16 main, main strings in it, um, which all go in a wave pattern. So <laughs> that kind of makes sense. Uh, I've got a bit of a cold at the moment, so you'll have to excuse my voice. Um, but basically um, what you have is you have um, all of the mains going in a kind of wave pattern, um, all following the same uh, kind, of, kind of journey. Um, in order to do that, uh, you need eight mains one side, eight mains the other side. You could say short side or long side, but we're going to do this as, as a two piece, um, which is the recommended way by head. And to be fair, probably the best way to do it anyway. Um, and what you have is at the throat, you've got um, eight holes on either side. So effectively, the, the mains go through one hole, then they go around a tube inside and come back out the other. Uh, you always pull only at the head. So I'm going to do this at 34 um, pounds on, on the main strings on here. Normally I'd do about 31, 32 pounds, but a bit like a Prince Power Ring. Um, got to allow for a little bit of extra tension because you're only pulling at the head. It's physically impossible to pull at the throat on this racket. Um, because there are no holes for the string to come out of. Um, first of all, um, quite a lot of the time people ask me how I measure the string. So very, very easily uh, for the mains anyway. Um, I know that there's 16 main strings, so I'm just going to measure the string out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and a little bit extra just for fun. Um, so basically I'm measuring 16 mains and a little bit extra. Um, you'd probably be fine with just measuring 16, um, but bear in mind you do have to tie off as well at certain points. So I'm just gonna pull the string out. Now I've just strung a racket um, with the same string. So my clamps are actually um, pretty good for the string already so I don't need to adjust the clamps I'm fine fine with this um, but it's always worth just testing before you go ahead that your clamps aren't too tight or too loose um, what I did with the last racket I strung with this string is I actually uh, this Prince Duraflex by the way is pretty good for rackable rackets um, what I did with the last racket beforehand uh, which I'll do anyway now I just tested under tension as well because the string will pull a little bit and get a little bit thinner. So because I've, I'm have i doing this as a two piece, it does actually make it quite easy to get the string measured out at the start. So I've just shown you, but also it means that you can get the perfect um, length on either side as well. So I'm just gonna pull the length through just to make sure that we've got the same on either side. I'm not sure if you can see here actually, but I'm doing just running the fingers through my hands. Nice and equal when we get it there. Um, now what we're going to do on this, a bit like a power ring, um, you might have heard me mention before. Right, so whoever's gripped this racket last time round, uh, they've got a bit of tape in the way there, so I'm just going to remove that tape. Um, basically, you have the eight holes on either side. So you're going to have to start on the bottom hole. So the bottom center, going to the next one up on the one side and the top going out on the other. So basically starting on the bottom, working the way up on the wave, starting on the top, working your way down. So let's do it that way to start with. So you probably can't see it, but where I'm feeding it in the throat there, there's four holes going vertically down by the center. I'm feeding it in. You'll see the string pop out here. So just uh, at the left hand side comes out the bottom hole there. Now, what makes this racket a little bit different to a lot of um, other rackets and fan patterns is that you have to get this in the right order. So I know because I've done a few of these rackets that I want to be going through the head one, so H1. Um, down here, but I want to be coming up at H5, so head five, so one, two, three, four, five. 
check one, two, three, four, five. So that's where I want to be coming out on that string. Now, all I'm doing at the moment, is I'm just going to pull this string through. Remember what I said before, you have to actually pull um, at the head only on this one. So the first string, either side, I'm just going to come through. So on this side, I'm going to go in the very top hole. And we're going to come to head five on this side. So one, two, three, four, five. One thing that you do also have with these rackets is you have um, some shag grommets and you've got to make sure that you go um, basically so you'll have like an under, over, under, over. So you've got to make sure that you get everything lined up right on the outside of the frame as well. You'll see what I mean. If you, if you string them, you'll see what I mean. Just pay really careful attention to the head, otherwise you'll end up with lots of um, cross strings that go, go on there. So what I'm going to do for the first one, now as I said, I've pre-tensioned this anyway, um, but just to kind of show you what I do, normally the first couple of strings, all I do is I just put a bit of tension through there just to make sure that I've got the width, the uh, the grippers on the clamps, just to make sure that they're adequate. So I'm going to pull that down now, so that's fine. So I know these are right. And now I'm just going to re-tension, because otherwise I'd only be pulling half tension. So I'm just pulling on the side. Another little trick for these rackets, again, pulling at the head. Just take your time. When you're pulling the mains, just pull them a little bit. Let the tension really come through. This is where an electronic machine really comes into its own, actually. So I mentioned before about having the shared grommets, so I'm just making sure on this side that I'm having the shared grommets coming at the top because this is at the top up here. And now I'm going to go and put this through number six, so H6. And then I'm going on this on the hole below the first one I've been on this side. And it'll automatically pop out the corresponding one. So I'm now going to go up to H2. And by the way, so the string pattern is pretty much identical on all of the head rackable rackets that, that are like this. So that's the Black Widow, Black Jack, um, the Radicals as well. So there's a, there's a few of them that are actually like this. So I've just pulled that through. I'm not actually going to tension that right now. Uh, reason being is because we're going to alternate sides as we do it. But I'm just pulling it through for ease of use uh, for after. So again, remember what I was saying, just give me a little bit extra. Let that string really gets attention first. And we're going to come through H6 on this side. So again, I've gone where it's got the shared grommets. I've gone up top on this side. Let's call it the short side. So I'm going to go down the bottom of the shared grommets on this side. And now I'm going to come back around, so it's H6, down to the outside holes at the throat. And that's going to come to H2, which is this one up here. Right, another little reference, just double check that things are lined up in these shared grommets. Again, you don't want it, the string going diagonally on the outside of the frame. So I'm going to pull tension on this one. So good, now I'll move over to the other side. Again, just making sure I've got the grommets correct. Trust me, it's a real time saver. If you, if you mess up, you have to do the whole lot again. Otherwise you get left with a pretty messy racket. You won't see the waves going just yet, um, but in a minute you will actually see them going through. So we're gonna stay on this side. I'm gonna go back through down the center to the, to the third hole down in the centre and pop that string out and then we're going to come to H7 so which is this one here and it kind of makes sense because you can see the pattern of it starting to come uh, starting to come right on this one as well now again this is another shared hole so just make sure you get it lined up properly 
little bit of extra. Okay, and try and clamp it as close to the frame as you can. I normally try and leave a couple of millimeters or so. Um, on this one here, you might see it's a little bit off. That's because the, that's as far as the, the, the post will go on there. But it doesn't matter too much because when you come back down around, it will catch up anyway. So you've got H7. So uh, now we're going to come down to H9. So seven, eight, nine. So we're going to skip the one. So we're going to skip H8 and come down to H9. Through the last hole in the center. It is a bit fiddly sometimes this, so it's not always the quickest to do. And I'm just going to put that through for reference. I'm not going to pull tension on it just yet because I'm coming to this side. So remember, the same as any racket, you never really want to be more than two ahead on there. Okay, so we're going to come through H3 and that's going to go through the center for the second to top hole. What I'll do after I'll string the racket, I'll show you what I mean. And remember, we're going to come up to H7. This one. On this side, we're going down along the bottom holes in the shared grommets. Skipping H8, going down through H9. And you're still on the outside of <coughs> the holes just down here. And then you're going to have the last one. Just here again, making sure that you've got everything lined up correctly here. Otherwise it all goes wrong. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of extra tension on here. So an extra 10%, just do it on the pre-knot. Make sure it wiggles through correctly. So I can get a bit closer to the frame now, which is useful. A bit, bit of a pain with these rackets is that they have got a concave on the inside of the frame here and what that means is that you can't actually pull the knot that great so that's why it's, it's doubly important to put a bit, bit of extra tension on when you um, get that going. So we're coming through um, H3 now to do the tie off on this. So should I take what? Whichever way you want to do the knots just make sure that you Get it so it's as neat as possible. So I'm going to come around this side on a parnell knot. And use my clamp just to pull. So again, yeah, this is a parnell knot which I'm using. I'm just going to really give it the beans on that. Hold the clamp in place. And then we're going to release clamp base first and there. So that way it's nice and tight. But you'll see on this racket because of the concave, the knots do twist around a little bit, which I'm not a massive fan of, but there's not a huge amount you can really do with it just because of that concave, it just loses that little bit. So now we'll go on to the other side. Make sure everything's lined up. Clamp out just to make life a little bit easier. I'm just releasing that tension there. Like there we go. So that's the mains successfully installed. Everything's all lined up correctly on this side. So that's looking good so far. So we're now on the crosses. Um, the first thing I should mention is um, I've started this one with a starting knot as opposed to normally clamping on the outside and then um, 
tying it off after, afterwards. The reason why I've done this is because I mentioned for about the concave on here, um, but also because this is a racquetball racket, it's very, very long and the pillars are pushed right to the edge on this one. So actually getting the clamps all the way back here is very, very difficult uh, to do without bending the string and losing loads of tension. So what I've done is I've pulled twice on this, adding an extra 10% of tension and just to balance it out that way. So um, that's the reason why I've gone against the norm, what I'd normally do with that one. Um, now is the process. Another thing I should probably mention actually as well is it's important to finish this racket on a hard weave. So that means you're effectively the last string that goes on a, on a cross is pushing down or pulling up on a string. So going against the, the kind of easiest flow, if that makes, makes sense. So not sort of running through the easiest path through it. It compresses and pushes it down, keeps things in place. Um, there are some really intricate things with this racket in a minute where I'm going to need to use the start break because this racket, unlike a lot of, um, well, nearly every other racket, doesn't have any holes that come out the sides of the rackets. They're hidden grommets. So everything is kind of tubed inside. So it's um, a very, very complex racket to string. But I'll show you some tips on how I do that. Again, what I've done with the cross string as well, as being a two piece, I've measured off, I've measured off the correct amount of string based on how many crosses are on this racket. Exactly the same as I did on the mains. Again, being very careful on the outside. Again, I'll show you afterwards, just to make sure that, um, just to make sure that there are no crosses or loops on the outside of the racket. We want this racket to look really nice for afterwards as well. This racket, if strung correctly, aesthetically, it's one of the best looking rackets once it's once it's done. as you can try to keep these cross strings nice and straight as you're pulling through right so on this side this is the last hole that we've actually got on the outside so you basically you get the holes on the outside up to where the, the arms are here where the, the two arms are here so after that everything goes pretty much well not pretty much it does go inside the racket which is where things get a little bit more interesting. So I'll tell you what, before I do anything else, I'm just gonna pull tension on this string. So I'm gonna need to show you a couple of new ways of doing this. So what we've got now is we've got, I don't know if you saw it come through, but we've got the string has now Go through here, through a little tube, then popped out the other side. So what we need to do is actually pull the string all the way through. And we're now going to use the brake. So the brake on this machine is under here, is underneath the turntable, uh, which is where it normally is. Some machines have automatic brakes, others don't, but it locks the table in place. And it's really important that you have that locked in place, otherwise, um, the racket will just spin around and you won't get any kind of tension. Now, what is, I'll tell you what, let's see if we can get a slightly better angle on this one actually, because we don't want to have too much angle, otherwise it just slips, but equally you don't want to damage the racket. You'll notice that we're pulling this string over here. So this is the string, it's going to be tensionally clamped off here, but you have to actually, to do this right, and I'm going to add, um, I'll tell you what, I'm actually going to, add an extra two pounds tension onto these crosses with the hidden grommets just to make up for um, the additional friction that's, that's coming through it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really important that you get this absolutely right. 
and you're going to be going over here because the alternative is to go underneath the frame and obviously you don't want to go underneath uh, the frame because if you were going underneath the frame what would happen is you'd basically be pulling down on the string here and it would not be very good for, for the string so now we're going to have to dot that break off and we're just going to come through start weaving these strings once you get going these rackets actually don't take too long to do they, they look complex they are pretty complex but once you get the knack of it they're okay just remembering just remembering that you have to be patient and bring it around so again this time i'm going to lock the machine again try not to make the angle too tight because you don't want a brake to slip and it is imperative that you use a brake on this one the other alternative is if you don't have a brake is you can just jam your hip against the grip of the racket against the butt uh, but you know unless you want to get a bruised hip or potentially damage the racket it's advisable that you use a really good machine on this you don't want to put undue pressure on the throat and the handle area of the frame by doing that the person i'm actually stringing this bucket for um is a pro squash and tennis coach very very good player very good racquetball player as well um and he does a bit of stringing but unfortunately his machine isn't really set up to string this racket um, correctly so he's done the wise thing I'm sure he, if he had the right machine I'm sure he could do it himself um, but he's done the wise thing by coming to somebody like me who has the right equipment to actually do this in the first place so you probably saw me or heard me putting the brake on and taking it back off again as you get further down this racket it gets a little bit more intricate as well But no doubt people will have different ways of doing it, doing this, this bracket. Um, but this, in my mind, is the best way of doing it and ensuring minimal tension loss. And one of the pains of this racket, as you can probably see, it's getting it clamped because the strings, it's a fan pattern, so the strings go diagonally at funny angles but it's also another good point with these clamps on the Viado L in that they're a bit closer together so you can get a bit more accurate with them than on the regular ones these um five tooth clamps are really really good and yeah it does get a bit fiddly someone's pushing this string through this is a decent synthetic gut Probably one of the most popular synthetic guts for squash, tennis and badminton actually. Uh, sorry, squash, tennis and racquetball, not badminton, definitely not badminton. Um, and it means it's a little bit easier to feed through these holes. If you use a multi-filament string or even ash away, it's a little bit harder to get it through those holes. Because it's too soft sometimes, you need a nice sharp point on there but one of the pains with this racket is it's um it's not the quickest to weave through you have to be fairly careful the string bed especially as you get further on down to the, towards the throat area the string bed does get very very dense it gets quite tight so again As you can see, I'm trying to minimise the angle on here as much as possible. Another strange thing with this racket, as you can see, so I'm pulling tension here. Normally the side you pull tension on is normally the side you clamp. And this one is obviously the opposite side. So that's another thing to 
get used to. You have to kind of train your brain to get it around the right way. But we're actually not too far from the end now. We've only got like four more. Four more crosses to do, and then we're done. Just put the brake on. Again, just pull the string through a little bit, just tease it out. Use that clamp, start and break even. You see it's getting really tight, really dense down here. What you'll see actually on the, the tie off hole on this is actually two holes vertically, one below, one above. So when you come through the final cross in a minute, it actually goes through the bottom hole. So this is going through the top hole, which is where um, it ties off. So a bit of a bit of a strange one, really. So again, just putting a bit more tension. Let's take a bit more time, sorry, to pull the tension through. Another thing I'd advise on this is measure out your mains, measure out your crosses, but it is certainly better to overestimate than try and be frugal with the string. Try and try and give yourself plenty of room for manoeuvre on this because the last thing you want to do, especially if you're not used, used to stringing these types of rackets, they can be quite time consuming for some people, um, is get all the way down to the throat and realise you haven't given yourself enough enough string to actually string with. What you can see here is finishing on a hard weave. So by that, what I mean is I'm gonna come, this string here, here is the furthermost bottom one. So I'm gonna go underneath it to push it up. And the top one is gonna be pushed down. So by the time I get to the last one, String's going to be going underneath it, sorry, over the top of it rather, to push it down rather than going underneath it, which just slots in nicely. So that's why it's important when you're at the start, when you're at the top cross, at the head, just have a look and see where it's going to finish up. Make sure you finish on that hard weave. Because if you don't, then it just doesn't look right. And also, Probably won't feel quite right either. Just release that break. I'm going to push this through here. And string, remember I said on the top, there's two, two holes vertically. It's actually going to come on the bottom one. Okay, so we'll use the break for the final time. Do it outside. It's the last one. I'm going to add a little bit more. Oh, oh, sorry, I've got to put the brake on. Just adding a little bit more tension on this one. They do have a propensity to sometimes lose a bit of tension. These ones, again, clamping as close to the frame as I can. Use the brake. I've got plenty of <clears throat> plenty of string left over on this one. Um, and it's very, very obvious to be honest with you. I recording a video, I don't really want to be going back over it all again, so I just gave myself a little bit more string than I needed to. Again, finish off with a pile on knot here. Get my clamp. Nice pull. 
as I've said quite a few times before, the, um, as I've said quite a few times before, racquetball designers basically are a little bit nuts. They design rackets which don't necessarily have the stringer in mind. This is one of those where you need to be a pretty decent stringer if you've never strung this racket before to get to grips with it quickly. But you also need to be pretty confident even if you're not that well used to it. Um, one thing which I should probably uh, just say, this player, I think um, he probably won't be using the vibro damper dampener which comes with the racket as standard. Two ways of doing this, you can either feed it through uh, the strings over under over under or you can actually um, push the final cross through this to keep it in place however if you do that then you have to actually cut the rubber dampener out um, which renders it useless so i'm just going to go with the with the former which is a much easier way of doing it it still stays in place because it's really tight and it allows you to take it off as well so just give the strings a quick <clears throat> straighten that one will straighten afterwards because it's just being hammered by that one but relatively straight Again, making sure we do the So the camera's going all over the place, I've actually got it mounted on one of the arms, so it's fine when I'm doing things like this, but when you're using the setting off wall to straighten the strings out afterwards, it does tend to jolt it around a little bit. Sometimes it moves the strings up a little bit actually when you finish the mains off. if you can see actually so these are the holes which i was discussing beforehand and as you'll see the waves should go in the same direction it's very difficult to see but maybe you can see it through there but they should all be going in the same direction so you've got eight holes on either side so if that one goes down here and it comes out there okay uh, and this is the top with the shared grommets so as you'll see if you choose the right grommets then it all lines up nice and parallel no messiness and there's where we see the lack of holes on the outside of the racket totally smooth apart from in the head so there you go all done <laughs>